Hey everyone, Chris Kidder here. Uh, so I decided I'm gonna start telling my stories over the last 30 years. And the first one I wanted to start with was, the first one I wanna start with is the story about traveling to Los Angeles when I dropped everything and moved to Los Angeles. It was a fun journey. It was a crazy journey. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Uh, I've been out here, let's see. I've been out here 21, I've been out here 20 years. I moved out here in 2000. Yeah, it was August 2000. So a little bit about my background. I came from Alden, New York as a kid. So, so when I was really young, Houston, Texas, when I was in sixth grade, my dad moved us from Houston up to Buffalo, New York, which is where he's from, in a small town called Alden. Uh, and then I lived there till I was 21. And when I was 21, what year was that? It was 99 or 2000, 99 going into 2000. That winter, I watched the weather for three months straight. Three months every day I was getting on I, I believe it was weather.com I don't know that was like right around the dot-com era but it was a website that had the weather all across the United States and so every day for three months I would get home from work or whatnot and I would compare the Buffalo weather and it would be 10 degrees 12 degrees 25 degrees and then I would look at Los Angeles Los Angeles would be 65, 75, 82, 67, 77. And after comparing all those months of weather, I finally said, I, I have to leave. I have to get out of here. Now at the time I was driving this old beat up Ford Escort that was gifted to me, but it was a rust bucket. And I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna throw all my stuff in my car and I'm going to leave Buffalo and try to drive across the country. Now I had planned, okay, I'm gonna leave in March. And I think it was the, either the last week into February or the first week of March, uh, I drove out to Rochester, New York to visit my old roommate when I went to school at RIT. And I broke down on the exit and my car just died. Like it was, we couldn't fix it. Didn't know what was wrong with it. We pushed it off to the side. I put a note on it, said I'd be back tomorrow to get my car. And <clears throat> we left, went and got high or drunk or whatever we did. Came back the next day, my car was gone. I was like, well, no skin off my back. Don't need it. But that definitely threw a wrench into my plans on leaving in March to come out to California. Uh, Long story short, my mom was going to Texas, to Houston, to visit her family and my family uh, a few months later. I think it was in June of 2000. And I was like, well, can I catch a ride at least to Houston? They'll get me halfway across the country. And she said, yeah. So I caught a ride with her, stayed down there with my grandparents, friends, family, whoever I could throughout the summer. I worked, mostly partied. I was 21, had a lot of friends and family down there all around the same age. So it was a lot of partying. Then finally the summer was ending up, everyone was kind of going in their own direction. And I had wasted a lot of money and I had $400 to my name. And my best friend, Charlie, his mother bought me a bus ticket from Houston to LA. And she said, you need to get out of here. You need to go. If you're gonna go, you gotta go. And I said, all right, I took the ticket. I took two duffel bags of clothes, my CDs, and my $400 got on a bus in Houston and bust the rest of the way out to Los Angeles. I didn't know anyone west of Texas. I wouldn't recommend a Greyhound bus to anyone. I would never do that in a million years again. And I would never let my kids do it. That was such an awful way to travel in my opinion. I think I would have rather hitchhiked. <laughs> uh, but, it got me across the country. I just remember the longest leg was going from Phoenix to LA. It felt like an eight hour drive. And 
I got on the bus late at the stop at Phoenix and there was only one seat left and there was a guy who was probably 400, 450 pounds who took up his seat and three quarters of my seat. So I was sitting on the edge of the seat and uh, then I turned and I leaned up against him with my feet in the aisle uh, because he was more comfortable than the chairs. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I got to Los Angeles and we got dropped off at the Greyhound station in downtown, which is right at 7th and Metro, which is historically Skid Row. And the bus stop was open till midnight at the time. I don't know if it's 24 hours anymore or if it is at all, but it was it was closing at midnight. They dropped us off at like 11.30 at night. And I, I had to leave. I met a guy on the bus from Chile and he's like, what are you gonna do? And I was like, I don't know. And he's like, well, you know, just hang out with me. I'm probably gonna stay in a hostel. And uh, he's like, but I, I don't know where, which hostel I'm gonna stay in. I didn't even know what a hostel was, which is like, a, you know, travelers, you know, they all hang, you know, they all sleep in basically dorms with bunk beds and stuff. And it cuts the cost down to 10, 15, 20 bucks a night. Anyways, we're like, well, let's, you know, get out of here. So we started walking down the street through Skid Row and that was a very, very scary night. Downtown Los Angeles in 2000 was very scary. Uh, there was no nightlife at all at, after six, seven o'clock in the evening. Downtown was a ghost town. Like no one ever hung out in downtown. Um, that's definitely, definitely changed. Downtown LA is amazing right now. Uh, but anyways, we uh, walked a few blocks and we were able to helicab. And then we said, hey, just, just take us to a hotel. And the dude, you know, I know exactly, where, at the time I didn't know where I was, but now I know exactly where I was. He took us to Burbank, which is like, you know, 20, 25 minutes away from downtown. So he was just looking to get money for his fare. And uh, we stayed in a hotel and we were there for three nights. Our third night there, there was an earthquake in the middle of the night and it ruptured one of the pipes in the bathroom. And uh, the hotel lady was this little, uh, Korean lady and she told us uh, you get out you get out now you party too much <laughs> she said we partied and we broke her pipes uh, which was so silly but we're like okay now what and uh, at this point I had probably like 350 bucks to my name and I uh, this guy Eduardo he found a hostel in Hollywood so I was like, all right, well, can I go with you? And he's like, well, they don't allow Americans. He's like, but I'll tell them that we're traveling together and see what they say. I said, all right, well, you know, I'll try anything. So we go to the hostel and the owner was this uh, middle-aged, at the time, middle-aged Greek fella. And uh, he said he doesn't let Americans stay, to only foreigners. You have to have a passport and be foreign. And uh, this guy Eduardo said, hey, well, we're traveling. We've been traveling around the world. And uh, and he's like, well, where's his passport? And well, he lost it. He's got to get a new one. We've been traveling across the States. He said, fine, you can, you can stay here. So I stayed at this hostel and uh, I believe it was like 200 something dollars for the week. And so that burned through a big chunk of my cash. And through that week, I had to buy food. At the time I was a smoker. So I was smoking two packs a day. And so I burned through that cash real quick here in LA. And by the end of the week, after talking to a lot of the residents, found out that a lot of the residents there were working for their bed. So they would work three hours a day and that would pay for their bed. And I was like, all right, well, I want to do that. I want to, I want a free bed because I was out of money. And uh, for the last two days I was there that were paid for, uh, the the Greek fella, his name was Dimitri. He would come in and I would say, Hey, Dimitri, you know, I, I, you know, I'm a hard worker. I'd like to, I want to, want to stay here in LA and, uh, I want to work for a bed. And he was like, no, absolutely not. He goes, I told you, you know, I don't, I don't let Americans stay here. And, uh, and then I saw him a few hours later. I was like, Hey man, you know, if, if you got a spot, I definitely like, I'll probably be your hardest worker here. Plus I know a lot of maintenance stuff, construction stuff which was BS, you know, I didn't. I mean, I was 21 years old. I didn't have construction background, but I'm a hard worker and I knew that. And I knew like, if he needed me to do anything, I'd figure it out. And uh, again, he said, no, my last day there, uh, he came in and out probably seven or eight times throughout the day. And I 
bugged him every time I saw him. Hey, Dimitri. Hey, this is Chris Kidder, man. Like, I definitely want a bed here. Like, I need a place to stay. I'm gonna be your hardest worker. You know, I'm gonna be here as long as you need me. Whatever I could say to just like get him to say yes. And then finally, after the seventh or eighth time of asking him, he's like, man, dude, if you shut the F up, will you please like not talk to me again? I'll give you a job. Uh, I'm gonna have you work the desk, you know, three hours a day. And then if I need you to fix anything, if I need you to fix toilets, if I need you to unplug toilets, uh, if I need you for anything, will you do it? And I say, yeah, absolutely. And he goes, all right. He goes, I'll give you a job for a week. We'll try you out. And, you know, he goes, if you work out and you get along with all the other kids here, he's like, I'll let you stay longer. And that ended up being how I got a bed for two years and two months. So for two years and two months, I worked under this guy. And uh, that was a very challenging two years and two months because it's very easy to fall in that trap of, well, my bed's taken care of. And then any money I made on the side, uh, I just wasted going out, partying, going to clubs. It was a huge nightlife, not far from where we were on the Sunset Strip, which is actually where I met my wife. So I don't regret any of that. Um, but yeah. That was how I got to Southern California. A lot of people don't know my story and I have a lot of stories to share. I'm honestly gonna start doing this probably once a week and just posting it. You can comment, you can like it, you can dislike, I don't care. This is more for anyone who's interested in my stories or you know, if you can relate you know, to my stories, uh, great. This is more like I can look back at this for memory in case I have memory loss. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I want to start sharing these stories, but there's a lot of funny stuff that happened along the way. Um, I know when I left Buffalo, I had friends, I had a buddy Jason, he told me I was nuts. Like, why am I leaving? I had other friends saying the same thing. Um, my parents were like, why are you doing this? Actually, when I got here, um, that first week when I was running out of money, I basically ran out of money while I was still trying to ask for that job for a free bed. Uh, I remember calling my parents, I think I called them collect. And, uh, and I talked to, I believe it was my father and told him like, you know, I th think I made a mistake. I want to, I want to come home. And, um, his words were, Hey, chai home. And uh, that was the last time I talked to them for probably a good solid six months. Um, I was I was very bitter about that. I, but in the end, like it was, I made a choice and I was an adult. I was 21, I'm an adult and he wanted me to handle it like an adult. And if I wanted to come home, find my way home. Um, so, you know, I, at the time, being a kid, I was mad about it, but I'm not mad about it. You know, looking back, it was very, you know, um, it was very much uh, push, push the baby out of the nest and, and let him fly, see if he's gonna fly or not. So, uh, you know, it was a lot of little things like that, that, you know, I wanna start sharing in these videos because um, I need to, rehash them some of them are really funny some of them are more serious but you know i would love some feedback if you have any if you can relate we'd love to hear it um if you're thinking about moving across the country and you have questions uh, let me know because you do sometimes you just need some words of encouragement uh but but yeah i hope you enjoyed it uh I'm gonna sit here and, and keep rambling on. Also, I mean, another reason why I'm doing this is I wanna get better at storytelling. Like here, I'm like dragging my feet trying to rehash this, but I want to get better at storytelling. I've never been a good storyteller. I talk too much. Brevity has never been my forte. And I gotta get better at it, I just do. And I think this is a good way of going about that. So enjoy.